Next on BYU Sports Nation, has BYU football finally found a schedule that makes even Jerem Jordan happy? Probably not. Has independence been as big of a competitive struggle as we think? Plus, does this season hinge on Zach Wilson's play? And a BYU Sports Nation milestone more than five years in the making. Let's go! This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Wednesday, May 8th, wherever and however you're connected, streaming. Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with a man who has gone through at least four different major hairstyle changes since this show began, Jerem Jordan. I would say three. What are, what's the fourth? Um, let's see. <laughs> the one you started with, and then you went to then shaved head. the shaved head, and, and then, then it came back. Did it come back right to this, no. or did it go to something else? Because I thought there was an in-between the shaved well, head and now one, what it two, is. One, two, one, three. Okay. Yeah. So just three different three. major hairstyle changes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll get to later. <laughs> Uh, t- today is a show of renown for us. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It is our 1500th episode, which brings us to our stat of the day. Yeah. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. 1500 shows, it is our 1500 people. show, which is cool. So we started the show September 2nd, 2013. 2013. We're coming up on six years. Yeah, six years in September. Show 1,500, which is pretty awesome. The over-under was three, 386. So we exceeded that by a lot. Okay. All right. Which is great. But yeah, there you go. 1500. Uh, next milestone, 2000. Let's go. It started uh, once upon a time in the basement of Viprovo Cable. <laughs> Essentially. We had, a, we had a show covering high school sports while we were students at BYU. So we got to know Tim Few and Provo yeah. High, and I guess Lone Peak uh, was an opponent. So uh, congratulations to everybody on our crew, uh, senior coordinating producer Michael Miner, our producer Ben Bagley, uh, and the many, many people behind the scenes who help uh, do the show every day. Yeah. After five and a half years, we have uh, worked with hundreds yeah, of people. Yeah, a lot of students on the show, a lot of amazing people, so. We appreciate everybody. So we're actually going to just call it quits. We're going to leave now. We're going to go to lunch early. I'm being told we have to fill the entire hour. My bad. <laughs> we're going to stay and do the show. Never mind. Well, fittingly, because it's show 1500, we felt like we needed to have one of the great 15s in BYU yes. sports history with us. Yes. Max Hall will join us today to celebrate and look ahead to the season opener against uh, that team that he has some feelings for, the University of Utah. Plus, 15 of our favorite things from 1,500 episodes of the show. Yeah, 15 for 1,500. I imagine your shaved head and probably oh. all of your hairstyles will be uh, recapped at some point in those 15 things. Yes. <laughs> Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Yoli Childs has a pre-draft workout scheduled with the Memphis Grizzlies of the NBA, according to Hoops Hype writer. Brian Kalbrowski, the date of the workout has not been officially announced. Stop all beat Utah State 5-2 in the final home game of the season. Emily Erickson went yard with a three-run homer in the first inning. Erickson clearly protecting here on the 1-2. And she hits a bomb to center field. Three-run home run. Emily Erickson. BYU leads 3-0 in the bottom of the first. We especially love that because Emily Erickson is a member of our crew. There yeah, she is. Emily. Yeah. She's a production assistant here. So I, she needed your number to text you about something for the show before the season. And I uh, said, when you hit a home run, I'll give you Spencer's number. I think she has eight now. She's got eight. She Second eight on the homers? team. Second on the team behind That's only awesome. Riley Jensen. Yeah. Well done, Emily. Yeah, she's, she's our player, man. The Cougars finished the regular season with a three-game series against Santa Clara Friday and Saturday. Should the Cougars win one of those three? They clinch at least a share of the West Coast Conference Championship and have the tiebreaker to go to the NCAA tournament. That's going to happen. Brandon Davies, as we move back to basketball, getting it done across the pond, scored 10 points in a 32-point victory. Zalgiris dominating in the Lithuanian League with two games left. They're 33. Zalgiris is in first place. Not bad. And women's lacrosse plays Texas today at 2 Eastern at Nationals in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Cougars are the two seed. They were the runners-up last season. They're trying to win the national championship. Hey, get it done. 
follow up BYU women's rugby. Taysom Hill will hopefully be there. All rise and shout. For the 1500th time, it's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Don't sleep on Idaho State. The Bengals announced some future football games, including a 2021 showdown with your Brigham Young University Cougars, which makes the Cougars' schedule two years from now, or a little more than that, unofficially official. Let's break down the 2021 slate. Jeremy opens with a pseudo home game against Arizona in Las Vegas. We think at the new home of the Oakland Raiders. That's cool. I like the that. The Las Vegas Raiders of Oakland. Listen, playing Arizona in the first game of the season is a win for BYU, except for 06. I think BYU's won three in a row, though, right? Yes, they have. 2007, Max Hall's first start, and then 16, and then 18. Correct. Yeah. So after Arizona at a neutral site, which in a lot of ways feels like a home game for BYU because of the Vegas connections. That's no, kind of halfway with, for Arizona. Cougars come home on Saturday, September 11th of 2021 to take on the Utah Utes. Okay, then Arizona State at home, uh, South Florida at home. So BYU doesn't play a true road game in the first four. They play at Cougar Stadium South, if you will, and then three home games, okay? The next four, uh, I guess there's five in October, at Utah State, Boise State at home, at Baylor, at Washington State, okay. and Virginia at home. How okay. about that? So there's a stretch in there between September 3rd, the day after the Arizona game, and October 15th, where BYU does not leave the state. Not bad. And there's a lot of quality programs. In fact, I would say those first eight games are all quality programs. Arizona, Utah, Arizona State. South Florida, or USF, Utah State, Boise State, Baylor, and Washington State, and then Virginia in game number nine. Then Idaho State is the the 10th game. November 13th, that one was announced yesterday via Idaho State and FB schedules. BYU plays at Georgia Southern in the penultimate regular season game and finish the season at USC on November 27th. Okay, five pack 12. 12 teams on the schedule. There's seven power five teams. I want three or four. So it's over my quota for that. Three quality group of five teams. I want three to four of those. That's great. Four to six winnable games. There's only two on there. So it is, it's a power five heavy, but these power fives, um, with the exception of, I think, Utah, given the streak, haven't, uh, you know, they aren't world beaters where you go, oh my gosh, that's impossible. At USC, that's going to be tough. But you can win half those, right? The power five games. And then the quality group of five games, those are good. I think, I think this is as balanced a schedule in terms of yes. when you play them as BYU will ever have. This is the best schedule I think I've seen since BYU football went independent. Why? From top to bottom because, yes, there are seven power fives. So that appeases, which, is too, which is too many. That many. appeases the crowd of, well, if BYU wants to play in a power five conference, they've got to simulate it. This well, will give eight or nine, then. fans... Yeah. A real taste of what a Power 5 schedule is like with seven there. And then you add on Boise State and USF. I mean, those are really good group of five teams. So this feels like a true Power 5 team type of schedule. But it's not front-loaded. It's not back-loaded. It is extremely balanced. And as you pointed out, other than USC – in recent memory, not a ton of these Power 5 teams have been super world beaters. Like, none of those teams right now, and I know this could change in two years because oh, programs sure. get on the rise As and some drop. Yeah. Yes. Not right now, anyway. They don't strike fear into my heart. So I'm looking at the schedule and thinking, yes, BYU's got a bunch of these games at home. And if anything's front-loaded, it's BYU. The fact that they don't have to leave the state for more than a month between September and essentially mid-October. Yeah, seven power fives, uh, certainly tough, but uh, that'll be Zach Wilson's senior year, by the way. Oh, man. Hey, let's go. This, to me, is the best schedule that BYU football has put together in independence. In SB Nation's preview of the 2019 season by Bill Connolly, who will join us tomorrow, he looks at BYU's S and P rankings in independence. That's a metric using things like efficiency, explosiveness, field position, and finishing drives. He points out that besides the outlier in 2017, BYU's finished ranked between 35th and 46th since 2011. Spencer, what's your reaction to those rankings? Maybe we're undervaluing what BYU football has accomplished in independence. Outside of 2017, that is a top 50 finish in each and every season of FBS independence. So 
do we need to give BYU and Tom Holmo and Bronco Mendenhall and Kalani Satake more credit for being consistently pretty good? Top 50 finishes in all but one season? I, that surprised me. I didn't think that they would be that high that consistently, but sure enough, those are the numbers. So maybe we're undervaluing what BYU has actually accomplished. Yeah, BYU hasn't been as bad as maybe we think, right? Because some of those 8-9 and nine win seasons were like, what? Let, let me point out a few things here. First off, if the S&P rankings were took or taken more seriously, yeah. then this would happen. But the rankings that matter are the college football play, playoff rankings, right, and the AP poll and whatnot. And BYU's been in that once. But those don't account for strength of schedule a ton. They don't account for all the nuances S&P, in my opinion, does. This is like the net rating. Yeah, like a Ken Palm-ish net type thing. Okay, Listen, um, BYU's 2011 season, where they were 10-3 and and ranked, Mm -hmm. because USC wasn't eligible to be ranked in the USA Today ESPN poll, BYU was 43rd. Do you know what BYU was last year in the S&P? 46. Three spots off of that. <coughs> BYU. Are you wh- what? What? Had its highest finish. That's a seven and six BYU team in 2014. The Cougars went eight and five in 2014 and finished 35th. That's with Christian Stewart playing right. the final nine games of the season. Yeah. Th- so this this gives us an idea of actually BYU's kind of been in the same area, and we'll discuss this later in the week. But has independence yielded? what kind of BYU wanted with this. BYU hasn't had that validating season yet, but what these rankings tell me is BYU actually hasn't had a bad team besides 2017. Obviously, 4-9 is just terrible. But 46th and 2016, 46th. The Taysom Hill-Jamal Williams team that won nine games against a really tough schedule was ranked 46th in the S&P when all is said and done, the same as the 7-6 and six BYU team last year, which is really interesting. Strength of schedule plays into that this. That takes into account all those things. Um, so S and P is quite complex. I want to understand it more, but what I know of it, this is really interesting information. Yeah, and Bill Connolly of SB Nation has given his entire BYU preview for the 2019 season. There are a ton of gems within that. We'll attack those uh, the rest of the week. The it, summer, you mean? And the summer, <laughs> the, yeah. Bill Connolly is going to join us on BYU Sports Nation tomorrow uh, to give us his specific take, and we'll hear from the word from the horse's mouth. To quote him, he said, if the Zach Wilson we saw late in 2018 is the Wilson we'll see moving forward, they'll have all the opportunity in the world to make a true splash for once this fall, end quote. So by making a splash, he means perhaps finish higher than they ever have in the S&P rankings. Again, that's a Bill Connolly quote. Jerem, is it that simple, though? Does the success of the 2019 season largely hinge on Zach Wilson? Unequivocally, yes. BYU is as good as its quarterback on offense. Okay? The BYU defense has been solid. And the, uh, Bill Connolly outlines how the defense has been top 50 this whole time in independence. There have been some tremendous defenses. If anything, the offense has held BYU back in years uh, in the past, 2012, 13, and so on. If the BYU offense can be good, they don't have to be great or elite. If they're good, that means BYU can really do something this year. Zach Wilson showed us in a few instances last season where the ceiling is, and that's as a freshman. I am so excited to watch him play this year and the next year and the next year. If Zach Wilson stays through his senior year, Can you imagine him matched up with all that experience against that 2021 balanced schedule? Oh, I would love it so much. But first things first, let's go through 2019. If Zach Wilson wins eight games, will people feel good about what happened in 2019? Because you probably should. Yeah, the schedules are harder. So what used to be nine or ten is eight to me. Yeah, with BYU. You open with four power fives. (laughs) You're the only team in the country to do this. Starting against. It's difficult. Utah, Tennessee, USC, and Washington. And he's made seven starts. It's not like he's this crazy experienced player. He's played against, what, one Power 5 team in Utah? Yes. One Power 5 team, okay? Now he's going to open with four, luckily three or four at home. That's all good news. Yeah, the success of really most college football teams hinges largely on the arm and legs of their respective quarterbacks. 
Okay, that's just how yeah. this game works. It is the most impactful <coughs> position and player in the game. There's no way around it. So if Zach Wilson has a fantastic year, then I expect BYU as a team will have a fantastic season. If BYU had a Jamal Williams type, I would say no to this answer. But it is a lot on Zach Wilson. Or a stud receiver like Cody Hoffman or whatever, or even Mitch Matthews. I would say, oh, you can rely on that guy a little bit. But the burden sits squarely on the shoulders of Zach Wilson for the offense. It really does. Well, and the thing is that I like about him is he wants it that way, Jeremy. Yes, yes. He wants it that way. And we'll address what he said on Twitter <laughs> that has us excited as well this morning. <laughs> he, that dude plays with such a mental edge. Like, he wants to be the guy in control. Right. And, and I know a lot of people say they want that, but there are very few people that actually do want it yes. and can execute I it. I don't really care what you say. I don't. Can you I care what you back do. it up. You are what you do, yes. not what you say. Yes. Oh, love it so much. Again, we'll get to what Zach Wilson said on Twitter. Our question of the day. It is show 1500 for BYU Sports Nation. And we think that we've uh, remembered most of uh, our favorite moments, but we want to hear what has impacted you and what uh, you remember <laughs> over 1500 BYU Sports Nation shows. What's your favorite moment? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response in from Keith and Tracy Jackman. The day Jerem Jordan reacted to some soccer news with a goal, and it lasted several minutes. He ran around the several entire minutes. studio. I think it was like 60 seconds, I like almost a full minute. I don't remember how long it was, but it was pretty long. <laughs> yeah, I think that Ashley Hatch scored. She scored oh, a goal for the boy, Washington oh Spirit, and so I... Ran around. I can't I believe I was just, yeah. your breath control was incredible well, in that I moment. Did, I did play trumpet. Uh, at Colonel underscore James 83 on Twitter. Hands down, Jerem's haircut. Which one? Was it the shaved head? Is that I'm what assuming. I'm assuming. But that, that was, was chronicle that it hasn't been four major hairstyle changes. It has been three. three. So which of the three is your favorite, Colonel James? We're assuming it's the shaved head. Your favorite? Hashtag oh, oh BYUSN on Twitter, favorite. Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, the winningest quarterback in BYU history, Max Hall, joins us as number 15 for our 1500th episode. What are his expectations for Zach Wilson in his sophomore season? You know what? Zach kind of has that same mental edge that Max played with. This is BYU Sports Nation. He's a honey cooker. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Saturday, May 18th, we'll be live from the BYU Fan Fest in Nashville, Tennessee, from 1 to 3 Eastern time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We'll chat with Kalani Zatake, Mark Pope, and many other awesome people. We cannot wait to go to Nashville coming up May 18th. Quick hurry, play Rocky Top so we can get in the spirit. Live from Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play, I am Spencer Linton alongside the one and only Jerem Jordan. Show 1500, so naturally we needed one of the great 15s in BYU sports history, Max Hall, to join us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Welcome back to the show, Max. How are you? Hey, guys, I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. First of all, you look great, man, like you could be on the cover of a Vasa fitness magazine for real. How's life as a bodybuilding expert? <laughs> I'm just trying to catch up to Jordan, man. I'm trying to look like him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> when, when, did you, no, just, when did you want it to take it to the next level? Because you, you're looking, like, really strong, man. Well, I just think it's something that, you know, my wife and I have gotten into is fitness and wellness and, you know, we opened up Pilates studio that she runs, so it's just something we enjoy, man. I love working out and um, trying to look good. Yeah, congratulations, man. Uh, it's uh, certainly paying off. Um, you may have heard, we're going on more than five and a half years of this show, so we want you to be honest. Did you think we'd make it to show 1,500? <laughs> Absolutely. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you guys you guys do a great job, man. I think you guys have uh, been really good for BYU sports, and um, I think people really enjoy watching us. So hopefully I'm around for 15000 Yeah, that would be fun. I wish that we had the show when uh, you were in school because we were actually in school with you at the same time. And had we had that, it would have been fun after the Utah game on that Monday. That would have been great, man. <laughs> 
Oh, it would have been great. I probably would have been on the show every day. It would have been fun hanging out with you guys. Now, you're a co-host I would invite in here, unlike somebody else I know, you know. <laughs> Max, with today's show theme of uh, 15 on the mind, what's the backstory into why you initially picked the number 15 and played in that jersey at BYU? Uh, yeah, that's actually a good story. So in high school, <clears throat> I wanted to wear number 11. And uh, as a sophomore, I got pulled up to varsity. <clears throat> and the last number left was 15. <clears throat> so I just took it and I said, you want to know what? I'm going to make this number worth something and stuck with it my whole career. What number was uh, John Beck in high school? I think he was 12 still. 12, yeah. What, yeah. what number would you have picked had it been your choice? <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to be number 11 because that's what my Uncle Danny wore. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well, it all worked out because now you're here, former number 15 on show 1500. The Cosmos have aligned for this to happen. It did. Everything aligned perfectly <laughs> just for you, too. Everything's <laughs> all about you guys all the time. You know I mean? Man, that, I, I love the sound of that. That's great. That's great. Hey, we're uh, a little over 100 days until BYU kicks off the season in Provo against Utah, a Utah team that is expected to compete for a Pac-12 championship and be ranked on August 29th. What do you think of the unique setup in a season-opening matchup between BYU and Utah? Bring it, man. Let's go. Um, You know, I always kind of liked playing Utah at the end of the season with the whole rivalry at the end. But if it's not going to be at the end, why not have it at the very beginning? First game, everybody thinking about it all off season, the buzz behind it, teams preparing for it. It's just it's gonna be a great game. I don't think you can go off of preseason rankings or anything. Uh no one's gonna have film on each other yet. It's gonna be line up and let's go. The fact that BYU was up twenty not once but twice and then unfortunately blew it against Utah certainly is a sore spot. But, Max, it's become a rallying cry and a, and a motivating factor for this team. They, they end every huddle with beat Utah. They talk about how we just need to do one or two things a little bit differently. How do you see it since BYU played Utah so well last year? I mean, I think, I think it's great that they're putting an emphasis on it, you know, with the breaks and thinking about it in every practice and every workout in the offseason. I kind of remember my senior year getting ready for Oklahoma it was kind of the same thing uh, in the breaks and everything we did. It was about beating Oklahoma. So I think they have the right mindset. They played them tough last year. I honestly think we have the team this year, and they're going to be able to put together a win, and I think we're going to get it. Max Hall with us on BYU Sports Nation. Follow him on Twitter at MXRD15. Following the Utah game, BYU visits SEC country in Knoxville at Tennessee, then returns home to face a couple of other Pac-12 powers, USC and Washington Max, how many of those first four Power 5 games does BYU need to win in order to feel like it was a success? They have to win two out of the four. They have to. They have to figure out a way to get it done. And I I honestly think they have a good shot of winning the first two. Um, I think we're going to beat Tennessee. USC and Washington are going to be tough. If we can somehow pull out one of those as well, um, Things are really looking good going forward, and I think it's going to bring a lot of confidence to the team. But for sure, we got to get two. Obviously, a good tight end helped you in your career with uh, with my favorite man, Dennis Pitta, and obviously a bunch of tight ends here at BYU. But on third down, that guy is a key figure. Now BYU has not one but two good ones in Matt Bushman and Moroni Laulu-Pututau, who appear perhaps to be number two and three best playmakers on this team. What role do you see them having this season? I think, yeah, I think those guys are going to be key. If you remember my senior year, I not only had Dennis Pitta, but I also had Andrew George. And the nice thing about having tight ends like that who can not only block but run routes, it makes it really tough matchup-wise for the defense and what personnel they're going to be in. So you can find matchups against linebackers and take advantage of it. But both of those guys, like you said, are playmakers. And on third down, having the mindset of, I know – this guy's going to get open, or I know he's going to make a play for me. It'll just bring confidence to the quarterback. We're speaking with former BYU quarterback great Max Hall on BYU Sports Nation. I made the comment earlier that Zach Wilson and his mental approach and his mental edge kind of reminds me of the way that you approached 
the game as a quarterback at BYU and in your professional career. He's recovering from shoulder surgery. He remains uber confident, says he'll be 100% before fall camp. What are your expectations for the quarterback in his sophomore season? Well, first of all, I, I love Zach, and I think you hit it perfect that he's just a football guy. He, he's, he's a film rat. He knows the game really well. He loves talking about it. I know he's always wanting to talk to the coaches about plays or situations or defenses. He's just hungry for it all the time. I got a chance to be around him a little bit in spring and um, talk to him at the um, spring game and have him just explain stuff to me and talk ball. And the kid is really smart. I was really impressed with how far ahead he is at so young. So the key thing for him is going to obviously just get healthy first continue to work on the mental part of it, be around, be still be a leader on the team. And then I told him, listen, don't rush getting back. Do everything they tell you to do. Make sure you come back when it's right so you don't get hurt again. And then you'll have time to develop the chemistry and everything with your receivers. So that's what Zach has to do. And then the expectations for him are high. He did so well last season. I think we expect him to keep it rolling and even improve on that going into this one. I think uh, Cougar Nation's excited to watch him play. Someone took a picture of the two of you talking at the spring game and I think put the caption like, here's how you beat Utah. You gave them all the keys, right? <laughs> uh, hopefully. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hopefully I gave them something that'll, that'll spark it a little bit. But um, like I said, we're excited to watch Zach play. Max, always great to talk to you, man. Congratulations on all your success in life and uh, keep up the good work with uh, the bodybuilding and the Pilates studio. And let's give you some karma for future success. All right, man. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me on. It's always Thanks, a pleasure. Max. You got it. Max Hall, number 15 on show 1500. Joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Love that guy. Yeah. Coming up from weird moments to Olympians, we'll take a walk down memory lane. We want to know more of your favorite moments over more than five and a half years of this show in the 1500 episodes. So tweet them in. Hashtag BYUSN. We'll read some of our favorite tweets coming up in just a bit. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's keep it rolling, BYU Sports Nation. Show 1500. Thank you for being a part of BYU Sports Nation and for everything you have done to help us have a job. If nobody watched or listened, I don't think the show would exist. So, (laughs) thank you. Seriously, thank you. And uh, we'd like to give you a gift of second visit to today's headlines. What a a gift. I know, right? Hey, (laughs) Yoli Childs thinks it's a great gift. He's got a pre-draft workout scheduled with the NBA's Memphis Grizzlies. That, according to Hoops Hype writer Brian Kalbrowski. The date of the workout has not been announced. Good luck to Yoli. Softball beat Utah State 5-2 in the final home game of the season. Emily Erickson went yard. Three-run homer in the first. Erickson clearly protecting here on the 1-2. And she hits a bomb to center field. Three-run home. Cougars finished the regular season with a three-game series against Santa Clara Friday and Saturday. Well done to Emily. That was a fun home run to call. Brandon Davies scored 10 points in a 100-68 BC Zalgiris win in Lithuania with two games left in the Lithuanian League. Regular season Zalgiris 30-3 and and not surprisingly in first place. And women's lacrosse plays Texas today at 2 Eastern at Nationals in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The Cougars are the two seed. They were the runners-up last season. Good luck to BYU. To continue this celebration of episode 1500 on BYU Sports Nation, we have identified 15 of our favorite moments and some general show themes in the lengthy and special history of BYUSN. It's not a ranking, but it's an excuse to walk down memory lane of the past five and a half years of the show. So let's keep it weird to begin because that's the way that we're going to do it. And Jeremiah, my spidey senses have again indicated that you are a key component in many of these strange happenings. What? Let's rewind to December of 2015. Viva Las Vegas and the Vegas Bowl. We'll start with the pool jump at the Hard Rock Hotel. It was freezing. Gosh, I look amazing. You, Hey, you do look pretty good. What? All in hopes of inspiring BYU to beat Utah in the Vegas Bowl. Yeah, it was really cold. Oh, the splashdown. I can feel the cool. Now you think, oh, Vegas, it's warm. No, it was 50 degrees. We're in the shade, so it's probably like 38. Jump into that water <laughs> that wasn't necessarily heated. It was freezing, man. That was really fun. 
It was, it was a little fun. concerned for you when you got out of the pool because it was so cold. I'm concerned for me looking at me back then. Jeez. <laughs> It's only gotten worse. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Well, I've got to play like four Great times a week. Basketball. But yeah, like you said, you need to ask for more retweets to get that pool jump in play. Yeah, exactly. Also, how do you like your ribs? How about the time the microphone broke in studio? Okay, the, so before the show, I was playing with a microphone. This is our old desk. And, uh, yeah, broke it. Uh-oh. So uh, Ryan Rodriguez, <laughs> one of our production assistants, held the microphone up during a Mike Littlewood interview. His arms, his, like, shaking yeah, uncontrollably. Arms, yeah. yeah. That was fun. We have a new desk, and hopefully I won't break the microphones here. Wow, rewind to 2014. How about your hair in that moment, too? Very nice. Yes. Just like my bod. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, then there's this unforgettable gem with national champion BYU football receiver, former NFL guy Glenn Kozlowski in studio. We can bro. We well, it's not bro nuck? hugs. It's a man hug. We man yeah. hug. During the break. And we'll kiss. Nope. <laughs> On the cheeks, though. Oh, okay. On the cheeks, that's all. Uh, oh, we have to go to break now? That's crazy. Yeah, let's go quickly, because um, you want to kiss. Okay. <laughs> it still makes you uncomfortable. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't kiss and tell, though, you know? I, I love Glenn Kozlowski. He's a weird dude, but so am I. Oh, he's he's one of the greats. Shout out to Glenn. What's up, man? Yeah. Uh, and then there was the time you said that uh, you could run a four nine forty. Oh that, boy, that didn't happen. Do we, do we have to show this? We uh, you ran twice. You thought you had a chance, but you you set up to fail. At least it was faster than Tom Brady's combine run. And I'll say really? this: that's the standard. What the heck was I doing running in baggy basketball shorts on a grass field outside yeah, into a headwind? It was an aerated field. I did so many things wrong, yeah, even to prepare. You were trying really hard, though. I was. Look at your face. There. I tried really hard. Mitch yeah. Matthews was like, dude, what? you set yourself up to fail and look like an idiot. Why were you not wearing spikes? <laughs> Why were you not on a track? Why were you not like in compression gear? Like, yeah. we could have helped you. We, he's like, seriously, you would have shed at least like two tenths just, mm. just with equipment and track and being indoor. And I was like, whoa, okay. That would have been 5-1. All right. Instead of 5 3. Okay. Right? There you go. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. So that didn't work out, but it was fun to do. Speed training begins uh, sometime over the summer. Really? Really? Whoever wants to volunteer to be my speed coach. You're going to try it again? Why not? Oh, okay. Why not? Cool. I got to be better than a 5 3 5. That's come on. Let's do it on a track. Let's put on some spikes. Let's do this thing, yeah. man. Skip, we got to do it the right way. Only. We got to do it the right way. <laughs> Short shorts. <laughs> Maybe an Olympian will train me because uh, we've talked to a few in Studio B. I mean, one of the really cool things we get to do, yes, is talk to high-performing athletes. But the Olympians, Guard Young, silver medalist for USA Men's Gymnastics, Dane Blanton, volleyball, Ed Eyestone and his mustache, track and field superstar Jared Ward competed in the Olympics in the marathon and finished top 10 Kate Hansen, the Luge Coog, and Taylor Sander of BYU Men's Volleyball, also a medalist, a bronze medalist in 2016. This has been incredible. Yeah, it's been really fun. I, when I was little, I don't think I'd ever meet an Olympian, let alone like know of some Olympian. So it's cool that BYU's put out so many. Dane Blanton, the exception to that. But the, yeah, just they get to come in studio and we meet these people, and it's really fun. Then there's the uh, the old Mitch Matthews conversation. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Mitch. So in the summer of 2014, on a very bored day, the comment was uttered that the BYU receivers were elite. And I go, whoa, 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 what? That was whittled down to Mitch Matthews. And then that was our Mike and Mike Joe Flacco convo, I guess. That summer and subsequent summers after that. Um, and then when he went to the pros and whatnot. So, yeah, Mitch Mitch Matthews. Um, we had him on a while back, and uh, I asked him about <laughs> – whether he still gets uh, the elite convo from fans. Hey, Does the elite still come up with you? Like, do BYU fans still, like, yell, elite, or whatever to you? Oh, all, the, all the Miami Dolphins fans, that's all they say to me now, too. <laughs> so they say well. Now, that's not true, but it's funny. Hey, he caught his only <laughs> NFL touchdown pass as a member of the Miami Dolphins in the preseason against his former team, the Vikings. Well, he had a lot of form. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. Uh, I Listen, I love Mitch Mathis. Uh-huh. He was awesome. Just wasn't elite. He That's, was part of the last yeah, he was great. great productive receiving group that BYU's had in 2015. He was the leader of that group. Let's hope this year's team can be more yes. receivers can be more like that. Let's go. Veterans, 
Uh, they have something to prove. Tanner Mangum threw year. for 3,300 yards as a freshman. There's a reason for that because he had incredible receivers. You can, and you can't accidentally get 3,300 yards. It doesn't – poof, it's all the receivers. No, it's – that was Tanner's peak year for sure. One of our – other favorite people to have on the show is BYU women's basketball coach, NBA veteran, Jeff Judkins. <laughs> Just because he's one in a million. He's awesome. He gave us Juddy Face, one of the more viral moments that we've experienced in yeah. our five and a half plus years of this show. And it happened during the NCAA tournament selection show when he got the seating. All of his team and coaches are freaking out. They're excited. He's not impressed. It's unimpressed. So we put him into a bunch of memes with Lance Stevenson blowing. Well, into his fans ear. did. We and just handed it to you and you, Bjorn. But Kayla Maroney getting her silver yeah. medal unimpressed. To the point where in the NCAA tournament game BYU played, they showed some of them because it went. It was that viral. Yes. Viral. Juddy face. Yeah. It was also fun to surprise Coach Judkins in the team's most recent trip to the NCAA tournament when they found out they were going to Stanford, California as a seven seed. He said, it'd be nice if Steve Young showed up, and then we went to work and put this together. You, you also called out Steve Young. Have you reached out to Steve? No, I, I haven't. Uh, I know he's busy, but it'd be really be nice if he could kind of come. And- Coach, this is great. I'm going <laughs> to... How else is going to come out in power, man? We're going to be there Saturday. <laughs> this is exciting. You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're showing up, we're going to be pretty pumped. I know my team will for sure. Coach, we'll be, we'll be small, but we'll be loud, all right? <laughs> okay, that's all matters. It's, it's not the volume, it's the noise. That's what it is. <laughs> Thank you so much. That'll be cool to see you, Steve. Oh. What a great moment. I'm so glad we could orchestrate that. And Steve went, and they won. It was great. Then there was the summer of 2016. Big 12 12 expansion, or so we thought. BYU maybe in the Big 12. uh, Courts, BYU, the whole thing. So during that time, we created what's called the Big 12 Update Center. And Ben Bagley would man it. We would go to him. He would give us the latest and we would talk about it. And we just kind of miss it. So uh, let's go back to the Big 12 updates. Center. Dust it off. Decision 2016. A Big 12 expansion update <laughs> on the BYU Sports Nation. Well, guys, welcome to the Update Center. Listen, I got a fax. Still no news. Back to you. Uh, I wish there was news. Kind of. Not, not really. I love but how kind unexcited. Of. And unimpressed Ben Bagley looks in yep. that moment. Bagley face. 2016, yep. an election year. We thought BYU might get into the Big 12. Oh. Yeah, still no news. <laughs> I'm just envisioning Jason Shepard running down here with the paper. <laughs> we did it! We did it! We got it! Yeah. Okay, coming up. Remember when I shaved my head? Or do you remember the origins of the BYU Sports Nation karma? The blue goggles Mm -hmm. and when the countdown started. Getting the details of that next. This is BYU Sports Nation episode 1500. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The Batcats are in prime position to get an NCAA regional at large spot if they keep winning. And they'll try to do that tomorrow in game one of a three game series at home, the final home series against San Francisco starting tomorrow. 8 Eastern on BYU TV Digital and BYU Radio. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, episode 1500. We're pushing year number six as of September 2nd. And one of the more visual elements of the show is the blue goggles. Blue goggle alert. Blue goggle alert. Initially, Jerem, was invented to make fun of yours truly for my overly (laughs) optimistic takes at times. And then it evolved into any wild take, whether super yeah. optimistic or super negative, right. from any BYU fan. Basically, Cougar Board Incarnate was <laughs> what it's become, I think, at this point, <laughs> which can be overtly negative. We have several versions so of the blue I've goggles. Heard. We have the easygoing blue goggles with the wood frames. Yeah, I'm yeah. wearing those right now. We mm-hmm. have the bedazzled blue goggles. I'm putting on those over. You have the oversized national yeah, championship blue Taysom goggles. Yeah, for Heisman. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's uh, it's been a fun road, man. I'm glad that uh, everyone can make fun of me and it could turn into something. It's great. Yeah, it's I'm great. glad that we can make fun of you in a formal way. Yes. We've had some really big wins to celebrate here, which has been awesome. And uh, one of the first ones we had was when we were radio only for the first 
uh, six months. BYU football went to Texas, won the Taysom Hill hurdle. It was awesome, man. Here's what it sounded like after that win. I think the word epic is vastly overused in our society, but, I mean, the BYU-Texas result probably deserves it. BYU comes out. They don't just beat Texas. They pound Texas. It was it was incredible to see BYU take over that game defensively uh, as it progressed. Taysom Hill and the BYU Cougars and Jamal Williams and everybody. Broncos said, we won't be intimidated, and they weren't. 550 rushing yards <laughs> against well, Texas. That was, that was, oh, are we talking 2013 or 2013? 2013. 2013. 13. That okay. was the radio My bad, only. 2013. Yeah. 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 Uh, men's basketball beat Gun- Well, they did it in 2014. Too. Yes, they did. Men- men's basketball beat number one Gonzaga in 2017. That was an awesome win. Here's what that sounded like. Men's basketball, maybe you heard, and if you haven't, where in the world have you been? Upset number one ranked Gonzaga in the kennel on Saturday, 79-71. Oh, 30 man. and 0. Nope. They had printed 6,000 newspapers ready to hand out. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Yes, BYU beat number one for the first time ever in basketball, handing Gonzaga its first loss of the season with a 1% chance to win. That was awesome. So good, right? Three times in a row. That I was the third it. of the three. I can't believe it. It was crazy. You went to the wrong Gonzaga. And then football this last year at Wisconsin. That was fun. <laughs> Craziest thing we saw on Saturday. BYU won the game. <laughs> That's the craziest thing. Like, BYU went in, beat sixth-ranked Wisconsin, 21-point underdog, Heisman Trophy candidate on the other side, top-10 team. I mean, this is one of the greatest wins, like you said, in BYU football history. BYU won this game. Wisconsin did not lose it. BYU won it. This is one of the greatest wins in the history of BYU football. It was a great win. Only Wis- loss for Wisconsin at home. Wisconsin goes 8-5, and five, so perhaps dithers it a touch, but still a great win for BYU football, oh, which was so fun. Right? Absolutely. You were there. It was great. I was here. And, of course, when it was announced that BYU was lifting the ban on caffeine on campus, I wasn't here for that show, but I remember waking up uh, and thinking, oh, my gosh, this is a big deal. And Lindsey Lewis, at the end of the show, drank some Coke and then spewed it for it. It all went horribly wrong. <laughs> Expectoration <laughs> in abundance. And, uh, yeah, since then, BYU hasn't won more than seven games in a season. So I'm wondering if there's a caffeine curse. Is that uh, carpet still stained from that <laughs> Coke incident? Let me just tell you, that's some cheap carpet in there. It can easily be replaced. <laughs> or can, like a uh, casino in Vegas. What's well, that industrial quality carpet? Yeah, it can be it easily cleaned as well. It doesn't smell of smoke, that's for sure. Jerem, several people have tweeted in that their favorite moment yeah. or most memorable moment has to do with, again, one of your hairstyles mm-hmm. or lack thereof because – you had your head shaved when you said that you would do that if BYU beat Gonzaga. It was number three at the time. I didn't think there was any way they'd do it. And they did it, which was awesome. And you were at the game. I was at the game. Which made it even better. I went, I went to the the first one, right? That was the first <laughs> yes. time. It was amazing. Yeah, so Skylar Halford, there's uh, Caitlin Jenny. No, Caitlin King. Former producer. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there was an original set of, of uh, <laughs> clippers that didn't work. And then uh, the sheep shears came in. Those worked. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, Jerem, then uh, I, I don't, it, it was the karma that you took to Spokane that probably got that win. Perhaps. That's a thing that's developed. Uh, people come on the show. They have good games after. I think here's the music. There it is. Mm-hmm. This is actually the men's chorus live from the HVAC. The, the Gregorian chant. That's, we have them on demand. They just sit there waiting for any time we mention the karma, and then they do it. We're trying to get a uh, vocal point, but they're way too expensive. Anyway, so we, we thought... This is this is weird. And it kind of started with Skylar Halford, who were reflected a few years later on that very moment. The karma rewind when you joined us in the early days of BYU Sports Nation on radio. <laughs> Once upon a time. <laughs> Do you remember so what happened ago. moments later, oh, essentially, man. Skyler? How could I forget? What was it, 28 points, 20? first career start, San Diego at home? <laughs> Should I say more? I mean, I think I still remember it. I may go back and watch highlights every now oh, and then. Oh, we're watching highlights right now <laughs> on the BYU TV side. Oh, gosh. And then, yes, we had met in studio before that, and the karma began, my oh, friend. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was after that when we thought, okay, wait a this second. This is kind of weird. He makes his first start, goes for 28, has his best career game. Yeah, like who's this guy? And he just said 28. This is amazing. And then it became. So, 
a we thing. Have, we have yet to give it to a really bad player just to see how powerful it is. <laughs> <laughs> All the players we give it to are at least decent. <laughs> We've had the opportunity to take the karma across the country and do live remotes in Miami Beach back in 2014, then in Las Vegas in 2015. Uh, Those climates were a little bit different uh, to celebrate the bowl seasons. Mm -hmm. San Diego, another great climate right next to the marina outside of the hotel. Then fan fests in Corona, California, where it was like 100 degrees and 100% humidity. We met Mo Longy there for the first time. And last year's fan fest in Mesa, Arizona, when there was an amazing BYU fan turnout. It's called BYU Sports Nation for a reason. Yes. It's not uh, BYU Sports in Utah Nation. It's the whole country, the whole world. So and Nashville, we we're coming to see you next coming week. Coming to your city. Okay, coaching switches. Uh, we've been here for some notable coaching switches, uh, most notably Bronco Mendenhall to Kalani Satake, and then very recently Dave Rose to Mark Pope. It was fun to cover those teams and see the new eras for each of those new coaches, and we're excited about uh, the basketball. Yeah, it does not happen often, especially at BYU where there is a head coaching change in one of the major yeah, sports. Yeah, because we treat it like a calling. It kind of feels Your that way. The state president goes for 10 years. What? I mean, it went 2005 was it's the not. last one before Kalani Satake, so 11 years. And then uh, Dave Rose was 05, and that lasted 14 years before Mark Pope takes over. Yeah, it can be shorter. Yes, it can. If you're good, it can be as long as you want. Oh, speaking of coaches, we've shot multiple commercials and often had coaches play prominent roles in those commercials on BYU TV. And it's always interesting when uh, they get involved with us in some of that production. Take a look at this. For those not aware, yeah, the coaches pulled off a pretty good prank on us. So we're getting back at them now. On the phone, Spencer, a rare treat. We have two coaches, Coach Judkins and Coach Detmer. Yes, and uh, let's throw out a generic question. What's the most important part of coaching your respective teams to victory? Well, for me, it's having the players watch BYU Sports Nation before every game. If you guys didn't do the show, we wouldn't win a single game. You know, I agree with you, Coach Detmer, because the talent has them and inspires us to be their best every day. Ty Detmer and Jeff Judkins looking on. <laughs> Juddy, I can't take Juddy no, seriously when he's got his fist clenched no. and pounding it into his hand. No, I cannot. Uh, we also really appreciate the people that help fill in on the show, so we enjoy a day off like everybody else. Brian Logan, Jason Shepard, of course, who's been a huge contributor here. Kate Hansen, Blaine Fowler, Greg Rubel, Voice of the Cougars, fun to him, have him co host the show. Lauren McLean, most recently, uh, now a new mom. Kevin Nixon was a co host of the show. Throwback, awesome. 55 footer. Dave McCann, Duff Tittle, Kyle Chilton, co host as well. You know who hasn't been a co host yet? Dennis Pitta. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Maybe this is the off season. Maybe this but is where we make it happen. According to our IMDB page, he is a co-host of the show. So <laughs> thanks for that. To make that accurate, we have to have him actually host a yeah, show. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, yeah, and maybe it's it's rumored for this summer. Speaking of IMDB, oh, nice. r- rumor. Dennis Pitta rumored. Wait, I'll co-host. be gone a week in July, so that'll be great. Just make sure he knows uh, when he comes in, if he comes in, yeah. how many days there are until uh, BYU plays Utah, because that's a thing that we have to revisit. Countdown to the youths. 113 113 days away from BYU against Utah, and the countdown, Jerem, you have to rewind to 2014, and it was not countdown to the youths, but countdown to the Huskies from like 248 days away. I mean, that was... Crazy, And we've done the countdown, uh, the, you know, shooting off the uh, confetti cannons in, in the BYU store, in our studio, in Lavelle Edwards Stadium even, which was awesome and really fun. But ultimately, the most epic of countdowns, and by epic, I mean epic meltdown. Oh, boy. Was last year. Oh, boy. And it sounded like this. <laughs> Jason, Lauren, and Brian are here. That can mean only one thing. Brian, why are you wearing your football helmet? <laughs> He's always ready. <laughs> There is, a, there, there is an explanation. Hit it. Cougars in the draft. <laughs> Cougars in the draft. <laughs> what, Jason, what, Jason no, what, no, what did you do? I did what, nothing. What, what did we, you do? Try Let's try it again. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> Countdown. Okay, Ooh, there we go. One, One day, day away. away. Let's go. <laughs> 
Oh, that was a disaster. So much so that we have to go to break. Coming up, the rivalry Twitter thread has begun. I can't get over careless whisper. <laughs> Epic rise and shout outs as well. Let the trash talk begin. This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> Shout out to today's guest, Max Hall, episode 1500, and all of you, which takes us to our Elite Voice of the Day, presented by Sundance Mount Resort, celebrating 50 years. Thank you for all of you that have tweeted in over five and a half plus years. We really appreciate you. Yet we have no time for Dennis Petta. Yes. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to Cosmo. And again, shout out to all of you. Here's the episode 1501 tomorrow. Go,